Hey guys, this is Gatsby with Tape, and today you join me for episode 12 of Road to Colonization. And here we are at Eve, getting ready to land, well, attempt to land our little rocket, which is going to attempt to take off from Eve, so that we know how, just kind of have a good feeling for what it takes to get off of the surface of Eve. So maybe one day I can do a manned mission, something I probably should have just done a while ago, but you know. Anyway, we do a quick uh, deorbit burn, get rid of the booster, um, because we no longer need that, it serves quite well. And then inflate the heat shield, which obviously there's a bit of a delay between clicking and things happening because remote tech. Um, but yes, now we need to descend and do many arrow breaking passes because, well, Eve's got a nasty atmosphere. It likes to rip apart ships and things. So we're going to slow down as much as possible. We've picked a good uh, spot where we should be over land for a few orbits so that we should be able to land on land. Um, and yeah, uh, so we start arrow breaking, bringing our apoapsis down and hopefully slowing us all down. Now the trick to Eve really is to try and land as high up as possible because, um, well, Eve's got a very thick atmosphere. It does have quite a high gravity, but the main thing is it has a very thick atmosphere. And there's actually a mountain that's about seven kilometers from the from sea level, which is ideally where you want to land if you're doing these things. I'm not exactly sure whether that is though. Um, and now we get a quick shot of the spacecraft not going dark, because I finally got the uh, correct version of ambient light enhancement installed. So now you'll be able to see things in the dark after, you know, like a whole series and 12 episodes. I'm good at my job. But now we're just doing another error breaking pass, slowing ourselves down, getting ourselves into, well, not a circular orbit this time, but after a little more, hopefully at a point where we can land safely um, and, you know, it just sort of get to Eve finally, because I've actually tried this once before and it failed because we sort of exploded. And then, yeah, another air breaking pass, just just straight air breaking because it takes quite a while to do these things. Um, but then finally we enter the atmosphere for the final time. We'll glide for quite a while, slowing down until we're in, um, well, an, a an orbit inside the atmosphere and then eventually it will become suborbital and we will land, hopefully, if all of this doesn't explode because, well, it is a bit of a top-heavy spacecraft, which is the issue. Now, at some point, as I said, I would like to land Kerbals on, um, on EVE, and, uh, well, I will do that at some point, probably this series, you know, maybe I'll just do a one-off video, just because I, I feel like I've been playing with KSP for so long and I've never done it, you know, it's something you kind of have to do, it's a rite of passage. Um, <laughs> but yes, you can see we've just flown over a bit of ocean and there is a bit of land down there that you can see, because I'm the Light Enhancement mod. I thought I had never had an update for 1.1.2, but it has. So thank you to the person who left the link in the comments, actually, last time, that really helped. However, it will not help us survive the Ebian atmosphere, and you can see, eventually, we tip and the flames engulf the spacecraft. Not quite as violently as it maybe have happened, because um, we've slowed down quite a bit, but it will not survive, and this will be destroyed, and we'll just hit the surface sometime. So we have failed again. It is not easy landing something this big in the atmosphere. It was just too top-heavy. Maybe I'll try it again, or maybe I'll build a proper manned spacecraft some other time. But anyway, that is a failure, but let's move on. To the next part of the video. We're sending back 500 science from the Odin station because, well, we need to unlock something special for a thing I want to build. Well, basically we're going to get the rapier engine for bigger SSTOs. And I'm finally going to take on the biggest challenge in my space, uh, in my space program. Interior design. I do not like how this space, uh, how this station looks. You know this, I've never really liked how it was laid out. Um, so what I'm going to do is move that fuel tank to the end of this fuel tank. So we have two really long beams, and then I'm going to move the support, uh, the life support module to underneath the um, the control, the command module and the science module, because then it'll be quite kind of even, because we've got the big workshop on one end of the big beams, so we'll have this on the other end, and also there'll be two fairly similar sized and shaped modules um, opposite to each other. So I think this will be the final, um, well, for now, the final kind of rendition of the space station. The final setup, not rendition, what am I talking about? It's not a play. <laughs> but yes, you can see I'm using the RCS tug we built um, actually in space. This was this is homegrown, this was built on the station. And at some point we will be bringing up um, a rocket parts tank, probably, so that we can actually do some proper building in space, because it would be really cool um, to be able to build some proper spacecraft. But I think most of the building will take place on other planets, actually, because um, 
Well, we don't have a massive need to build them in space here, so I think it probably will take place on, like, Duna and maybe Lathe when we eventually go there. Which, you know, we will be. I already have plans for it. Um, and the probe will be getting there fairly soon. But yeah, as you can see, the station now looking rather nice. Rather better, I think. But now we're just um, turning, we're on Minmus, uh, just doing a quick flick over. We're actually going to produce some oxidizer, because this spacecraft will not be fueling up the Odin station as I originally thought. It will be fueling up the Duna Freighter, because, um, well, we need some fuel for going to Duna, and I've realized we don't have a ton of time, so this will not be heading to Odin Station, it will be heading to the Duna Freighter, which has been named, but you will hear that name in a little while. So, now we are launching our another rocket, because we have something to send somewhere. Actually, we're sending something to the Duna Freighter. Yes, a large part, but well, the rest of this episode will pretty much just be working on the Duna Freighter. Because the transfer window to Duna is but 70 days away. We need to get it fueled, we need to get all of its modules on it, and uh, we need some Kerbals on it so that we can head out to Duna and start setting up the second kind of version of the base so that we can have more Kerbals down there so that we can start building things and mining fuel. And that's what this is. This is a, well, a mining spacecraft based largely on the Minmus miner. Um, However, it has been changed uh, significantly to make it lighter and also better for atmospheric landings. But we'll pop the fairing soon so you can get a good look at it, but it won't look massively different from uh, the Minmus one. Just a little less fuel because it won't really be leaving the surface, it might be hopping around a bit. It also has um, a little adapter on top, that's a docking adapter so that we can refuel the um, Duna Freighter with, uh, with the fuel shuttle from Minmus, because the fuel shuttle won't fit inside the hangar to um, refuel it uh, kind of in there where the only senior docking port is. Anyway, after that, uh, we're getting into orbit. We land the booster, of course, bringing ourselves back about 100 grand, which is very important because, you know, the spacecraft, the space programs run on money. So it touches down gently, and then we move back to orbit, moving in on the Duna Freighter, which has been renamed. Actually, not technically in the game, I'll have to do that. But basically, the name I picked out of all of the ones that I was given, I get, I got so many names in the comments, thank you so much, it was great to see that, just that many names for it. Um, just ditching the second stage there, preparing to move in with, RC with RCS. But yes, the name will be the Canterbury. Thank you to Warcats13 for, um... For coming up with that name, that's great. It's named after the ice hauler in um, The Expanse, which is in uh, kind of a major plot point and is a great ice hauler. You know, it it it, it goes out to the um, to the asteroids around Jupiter and it and it, it, it mines ice. I guess it'd be more comets, right? Because it's getting ice. well, it doesn't matter. Basically, it takes ice back to the back to the belters so that they have water. And it's really cool. So yes, this will be named the Canterbury, also because it's an awesome name and also because I love The Expanse. So anyway, we're gonna go and put this docking adapter on the Canterbury now um, so that we can obviously refuel it so it can go to Duna, quite an important part of its mission. Otherwise, it's just kind of a big space station. But now we just need to try and get this, um, try and get this miner in the back there, in the hangar. I called it a hangar, it's more of a cargo bay. Um, it's, yeah, it's kind of flared like that so you can fit bigger payloads in it. However, this would fit in it if it didn't have those solar panels mounted where they were. You'll be able to see that it gets almost in with a lot of precision kind of maneuvering, but it just clips the solar panels. If I just put them on the sides of the tanks, it would have got in and we would have been able to put this in there. Now my plan is just fill up the rest of the hangar with um, some other things and have this hang out the back, which was gonna happen anyway. The hangar isn't really big enough to fit all of the things I wanna bring. So yeah, this will just hang out the back, but for now it's just gonna hang out on the side of the um, Canterbury, just on this little docking port and the, um, and the fueling spacecraft can just dock to the end of this. But yeah, bit of a shame. It would have been nice to have this properly in there because it's a big spacecraft, but you know, it's fine. Anyway, now we're just gonna deorbit the second stage booster and go and land it, hopefully very close to the KSC, which you can see we're doing quite, uh, quite well, yeah, fairly precisely um, because I had quite a lot of fuel left over because I'm using my higher, th uh, higher payload capability vehicles for lighter payloads these days because it's easier. Um, and also I can land the second stages closer to the land, which is quite good. Um, and you can see we're pretty close to the KSE. We'll get most of our money back for that. But after we touch that down, we have a final launch today because we need to complete that Minmus station. 
a station that is being constructed mostly to complete a contract, but also because Minmus has definitely become the industrial hub of the Kerbin system, because it is where all the mining will take place. And we don't want, we're not focusing on the moon too much now because we've got all of the science off it. We have a base there, but it's not of massive industrial usefulness. And I'm trying to focus more on the kind of deep space, you know, the other planets, because that's quite important. Uh, so this is just the ore tank, which will be filled up by the Minmus miner, um, so that we can complete, complete the contract, and also in future just store some ore on the station, maybe do some processing in orbit, um, which could be useful. However, this won't actually be going out to Minmus today, because I forgot to put batteries on it, so it just would run out of electric charge in the dark, which means I wouldn't be able to get into orbit of Minmus. So we're going to have to do a bit of orbital repairs on it um, <laughs> in the in, with, with some Kerbals, which is kind of annoying because, you know, it's kind of tedious. But we'll do that next episode, and we'll just leave this here for now because we have bigger worries. We need to be fueling up the, uh, fueling up the Minmus, fueling up the um, Canterbury. God, all of my spacecraft are all mixed up in my head now. But anyway, we get a nice shot of us landing the booster on the ocean and uh, at sunset. Have I said how much I love the Scatterer mod? Because I fucking love the Scatterer mod. Look how beautiful this is, you know? Just a sunset and... Uh, I can't wait to see Jewel from Lathe um, with Scatterer. I've never seen that in my, in my gameplay before, but I know it's beautiful. Anyway, that's successful. However, when we try and aggressively land this stage at the... Uh, KSC, I come in way too fast and I wasn't really paying attention. And then try and pull the parachutes, but the staging does its thing where it doesn't really work, and then everything kind of fucks up, and I don't have enough time when we slam into the ground. So my closest landing attempt yet fails, which is a bit of a shame. It was so close to the KSC, but you know. So now it is time to fuel up the Canterbury. Uh, not entirely, this won't be bringing quite enough fuel, but it's got a bunch of liquid fuel on it, it's got some oxidizer on it, and all of the mineral propellant it needs. So we uh, disconnect the spacecraft from the miner, we fall off of the spacecraft because god damn it, I just knocked her out, uh, but yeah, then we get in. And we fire up the engines to head off. Um, this spacecraft has very low thrust to weight ratio, it barely gets off Minmus, that was at four times time accelerated as well. Um, but it's good because it's efficient. But it is pretty high on fuel right now. It wasn't actually originally going to have any oxidizer in it, but we want a bit of oxidizer because, as I said last time, the Canterbury does have a high thrust mode which uses liquid fuel and oxidizer, which is very important for leaving um, leaving Minmus, um, for leaving Kerbin. <laughs> I'm sure they'll have to do all that stuff where they sit in the chair and put the drugs in them so that they don't get knocked out by the high thrust. Hey, actually, yeah, the the in the expanse of spacecraft have like a very high thrust mode for um, doing in like emergency maneuvers. So this is actually kind of quite a lot like the expanse spacecraft, <laughs> except it's burning chemical fuels, not some kind of fusion magic. I don't know, Scott Manley did a video on it, but I can't remember what he said because it was a long time ago. Uh, but anyway, now it's time to leave Minmus for a little while. We'll be back here soon. These We should probably cycle out these Kerbals. They're probably getting a bit bored of space trucking and probably missing their families or whatever they have back on Kerb Kerbin. I don't really know. Do they have families or is it one giant collective? One kind of Clothulian commune, maybe. Um, but anyway, now we're just pulling ourselves into a... Uh, well, a trajectory that will encounter the Canterbury, or maybe I should start calling it the Cant, because everyone calls it the Cant in the Expanse. Yeah, we're just going to nip down to the Cant, just fuel it up, you know? Don't know why I'm from Los Angeles. Um, <laughs> yeah, this video is falling apart. Um, but yeah, we've got more than enough Delta V. For a second I thought I had like 6,000 meters per second Delta V, but then I realized I was actually had access to the payload fuel, which we kind of need not to have access to, because we sort of, you know, need to use that to fuel up the Canterbury. Um, but after doing a bit of an inclination change, annoying that we're not actually at the ascending node, but they're all in really annoying positions, so I'm gonna have to kind of do some burning. But yeah, we're gonna be on a decent um, trajectory now, and we can fix that inclination a little later. You can see I'm trying to fix it from far away in a vague attempt to save fuel, because the higher up in your orbit you do your inclination change, the least costly it is because you're going more slowly and like ch burning perpendicular to your orbit. Uh, I don't know, something about something about maths and trigonometry. <laughs> anyway, now it's just time to slow down. We're going to do our standard thing of um, doing the first burn to get us onto um, a much uh, kind of less eccentric orbit and get ourselves an encounter with the spacecraft, and then another burn to slow ourselves down and actually meet the spacecraft, um, which is 
just how we do these things because these uh, spacecraft don't tend to have a ton of uh, ton of delta v. Uh, well, ton of thrust to weight ratio. Even they have plenty of delta v. Otherwise, uh, they wouldn't get back. Um, there was a time in Road to Exploration when I had to do an error breaking pass on every one of these missions, and that got real old real quick because they didn't have heat shields. <laughs> But anyway, yeah, we're just uh, getting ourselves a nice encounter now. We've actually done a pretty good job of burning off velocity. And although we do get the encounter kind of close, the inclination's still way off. So um, we're going to miss by a way. So we'll have to do a quick inclination change and then meet the spacecraft. Um, so just burn north, south? Yeah, I'm going to just call it north and south. I think the actual terms are um, normal and anti-normal, but I'm going to go north, south. Um... <laughs> So yeah, just get ourselves a encounter. It's fine, we'll tweak it a little bit on approach. You can always tweak your uh, positioning on approach. And we do that, but I'll save you the uh, the monotony of these kind of long, long missions. Um, but yes, here we are, just docking to the cant. Um, and it's looking rather beautiful. We needed to couple that nose cone, because that looks kind of janky, and I want to have the cupola open. But just docking to the bottom of the miner, which will be hopefully attached into the cargo bay next time when we bring up some other modules, some... Uh, kind of habitation modules, maybe a lander. I'm not entirely sure of all of the things that this is going to carry, because there probably will be one other big spacecraft going out um, other than this, uh, because this can't carry everything, but it will carry most of the essentials for the base, um, which is kind of what it's for. Anyway, we pump all of the liquid fuel noxidizer into the various tanks, get it all fueled up, start getting it prepared for its mission. We'll have to do one, probably one more of these runs to fill up all of the outer tanks as well, um, and maybe send some up from Kerbin if we really need to. But hopefully we won't. But anyway, yes, this is the end of the episode. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you're looking forward to the future episodes where the Canterbury finally takes flight. Although I guess it sort of did take flight when it left Kerbin, but yeah. Anyway, when it goes to Duna is what I mean. But anyway, here we are at the end of the video, and if you want to go check out a couple more uh, videos, there is my latest episode of Fall of Kerbin, in which we have a big-ass tank battle. We push back against the cruel and invasion, and it kind of gets kind of like some of those scenes in Fury, where we're circling a heavy tank with a smaller tank. It's great. And there's also my most recent episode of Prison Architect, in which we start bringing in some prisoners, start finishing that prison, and yeah, it's going to be pretty great. Um, but there's also links to my Twitter, Twitch, and Patreon in the description if you're interested. But as always, I hope you've enjoyed this. This has been KSP with Tate. I'll see you next time.